unintended consequences on our environment and our lives of a 150-year-old fossil fuel world economy are clear. We face a comprehensive crisis. Although our civilization and our very existence depend on a healthy planet, we are causing potentially catastrophic damage to the planetary web of life that sustains us. We must change course or join the dinosaurs in extinction. Environmentally friendly choices that are more sustainable than other products and services are called green. Now that almost everyone is claiming to be green, we need to distinguish between what seems green and what is truly green. How can we learn to make the best choices? I'm John Kelly. I'm a local architect and longtime green building and sustainability advocate. To thrive, we need clean air, clean water, healthy soil, healthy ecosystems, and sustainable sources of food and energy. The net direction of change depends on the decisions we make and the actions we take. Action on a personal level is an essential part of the change we need. You can make a difference. I'm Dennis Thompson. I'm an architect in Santa Barbara with Thompson Naylor Architects. And I've uh, been involved with the green building movement and the sustainability movement in Santa Barbara almost since I've been here, working with the Community Environmental Council, the Sustainability Project, the Green Building Alliance. So this is a passion of mine, and it's something I've been working on really since the mid-70s. I got my architectural education at Berkeley right when the Arab oil crisis hit and it was our first wake-up call about the end of oil and the need to learn how to conserve natural resources. Climate change and peak oil are two of the most powerful issues that our communities are facing today. Of course, we've got to deal with it on a national level, but it really becomes a community issue because at the community level, of course, our buildings can be much more energy efficient, use less energy, contribute less to global warming. But even more important at the community level is mobility and how we all get around. Because right now in Santa Barbara and Southern California, we are so auto dependent. Um, we're using these two to 6,000 pound vehicles to move one person from here to there. And we've really got to work on ways to cut down our use of the one person in, in one auto uh, scenario. Well, there's a number of ways that we can individually contribute to this solution by changing our mobility patterns. It's so easy for all of us, including myself, to jump in our cars and go wherever we need to go. But the main alternatives to that are sharing rides with others if we're going in the same direction, uh, being more conservative about how many individual auto trips we take, trying to cluster our trips together so that each of those trips accomplishes many tasks and then using the alternatives to the car. The, uh, the bicycle is a great one, and I've learned to use mine over the last 15 years more and more as a, either as a commuter or as an errand runner. And at my office, I keep both my car and my bike so that I'm able to use either one during the day. I think approximately a third of Santa Barbarans uh, use the bus now, and I think a lot more of us could do that if bus service becomes more convenient, if we learn how to use it. So uh, use of alternative transportation and walking. A lot of the trips we need to take are short trips and uh, we can accomplish them by walking if we have good, comfortable, safe streets to walk on. The most exciting project for me right now is working on my own neighborhood. Uh, I've lived on the Mesa for over 20 years in Santa Barbara, and it's a great neighborhood with a lot of assets, but it's really very car dependent. It's one of those neighborhoods that was built in the 50s when the car was really the only way to get around. Now, people on the Mesa, I think, walk recreationally, but they don't, uh, they're not really able to 
walk conveniently to shopping or to many of the errands they need to take. So about a year ago, uh, a group of six architects um, who all live on the Mesa got together and started a planning process. And we call that process uh, uh, planning for the Mesa from good to great. Um, that's kind of our basic premise and this is our, our original uh, founding statements and, and then uh, next are our goals. This gives you a sense of uh, the, the principles and goals that we are, are planning to carry out our work, as you can see on the slide here. Um, we started by looking at the Mesa, looking at all of the various parts of the Mesa, and we created a map which describes open spaces, single-family housing, multifamily housing, uh, shopping and then our mobility corridor, primarily Cliff Drive. So we created the map and then we set about looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the Mesa. And uh, of course we have a lot of wonderful things about the Mesa, but uh, the things that we are lacking, if you, if you look at it in light of today's major issues, is alternatives to the car for mobility, and places to gather, community gathering places. So we started to talk about uh, planning issues uh, that could make the Mesa a better place to live. One would be more lively public events. And this doesn't cost any money or take any planning, but uh, getting people on the Mesa together so that we create more sense of community. Another thing that would help support that would be to have a public plaza like almost every small town village in the world has. We need a gathering place that's not full of cars, but as a place for people to come together at the center of the Mesa. So that's one of our goals in this project. Another thought is perhaps a neighborhood library so that we don't all have to come downtown to the main library using our car, but try to find ways that the Mesa can be more self-sufficient, be its own little village uh, by having these kinds of assets. Visually, we'd like to improve the Mesa by undergrounding the uh, wires. We've got a lot of overhead wires on the Mesa. We also uh, would like to increase walkability. This is part of this whole thing of getting us out of our car, making Cliff Drive in particular a more uh, attractive, friendly, safe, walkable street. One that instead of dividing our, our community in half can, can knit it together. We'd like to see more bike lanes. Uh, there, there, there are pleasant bike lanes on parts of the Mesa, but Cliff Drive is our main artery, our corridor, and it needs to have good bike lanes. We'd like to see better bus service um, so that we don't have to use our car as much, both to get downtown and to get from our neighborhoods to the shopping center, which is often congested with cars. Of course, the biggest opportunity of all is this Cliff Drive corridor, which is a, a two and a half mile long, 100 foot wide strip of property that the city's about to take over. And our group of architects has walked this whole corridor a couple of times. And it's, it's a fairly bleak, wide, super highway right now. It's not a pleasant place for people to gather. So we've come up with some, some visual options that might be a little more attractive places to live so that we see Cliff Drive not as a freeway but as more like a main street in a small town. So that our vision is having a place where people want to come, want to sit, want to walk, want to gather, want to create community. And that might include such things as some narrowing of some of the lanes in places, uh, some traffic control, some landscaping devices that would make this right now a very big, wide piece of asphalt into a much more attractive place for walkers, bikers, and uh, people to gather. So that's, that's our goal for the next year. We're gonna keep working at this. Um, we've brought these ideas to the community three or four times. We're going to keep refining them and bringing them back until they become more of a reality.